So um, thank you uh, on behalf of myself and uh, Mike Chisema from the Malawi Ministry of Health. Uh, he's been in transit for uh, a long time and uh, we haven't managed to pull this together. So I'm going to give the presentation and he's going to shout when I get it wrong. Um, and then I'll do the same when he talks tomorrow. Um, I want to talk about the WHO clinical platform um, and how it relates to Malawi and how um, and how uh, we've got provisional data. And I'm going to put a spoiler out here and say I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know. And I'm probably not going to surprise you with any grand results. But I am going to show you, I hope, that we have a potential solution for some of the data problems to bring together data and to answer the questions, particularly about case fatality in hospital. And just noting um, the, the ESPAR's presentation uh, with high case fatality rates in uh, older adults, I can't think of a disease that affects adults where that is not the case. But the next question is, what can we do about it? So some data from within hospitals is going to be really important. The Global Clinical Platform came about during the COVID uh, pandemic um, and was launched in, in May of 2020 and offered the ability for member states or facilities within member states at whatever level to bring together patient data, anonymized data, um, and to offer standardized data collection tools. And there's been a number of reports that have come out of this looking at high risk high risk populations, for example, those who are pregnant, uh, those with HIV, and I think we can do the same for cholera. Um, we can't do the same for cholera at this kind of scale. This is the number of data points we have, over a million of confirmed probable cases for COVID-19. But I think we can do it in terms of bringing a large number of countries or facilities together, and I think we can do the same thing. We perhaps can't quite measure this uh, geospatial distribution, but the maps shown earlier by Philippe show that there is a global issue and we do need some global support for it. This is a diagram of really just to illustrate one point. Two, if you count, we have a structured data system. And the second being that we pull data from two different places. So we can pull data from people entering data at patient bedside or from a patient record. And this is likely to be the case and was the case in Malawi during uh, the cholera outbreak um, from when we collected data in March. But we also offer the possibility of using harmonized data collection, bringing things together for combined analysis from existing data sets um, against our harmonized data structure. And so, I guess this is a call for the researchers uh, and the ministries here that do have data. Kate was saying, well, maybe is it was saying maybe we have data. We haven't been able to pull it together. This is a potential platform for doing that and for for learning things uh, together. Um, but where we have adopted it in Malawi for cholera. Um, in Guinea for Marburg. It's been under the uh, international health regulations. We have an ethics waiver at WHO, to, which covers the anonymized uh, collection of data. And then within the member states, uh, within the countries, we follow what, whichever ethical frameworks are required to collect those data. Uh, and we collect them in a modular basis, like it's been described here. We have core variables, and then we have additional data where we want to understand special populations. This is related to COVID. Uh, and uh, as was discussed earlier, you can get very, very complicated, and maybe we need to row back to something very simple. Um, for example, for COVID, we have a very uh, in-depth clinical characterization protocol, but we are starting to use within severe acute respiratory infection, a more surveillance kind of uh, pattern at the patient level, where there's a very, very uh, uh, light uh, footprint in terms of data collection and another offer to use to work together to decide what those data points are that are going to really inform the clinical questions because we can redesign these things. We can create dashboards um, and we can hopefully be useful across international partnerships. Um, so this is where we're up to in the platform overall. What we've wanted to do is to understand clinical characterizations and where we have uh, other platforms to look at specific therapeutic uh, interventions and adverse events and to look at the determinants of patient outcomes. This is all 
with the uh, with the exclusion of MPOX, uh, hospital related data facilities, although there is potential to collect community data. That's not what I'm going to show you. But you'll can see when we've been thinking about COVID and any number of other diseases that those predefined subgroups we're worried about are the same as, same as we're worried about in cholera and the same that has been talked about already today, perhaps with the absence of HIV so far. The data collection form for uh, cholera fits in with that sort of harmonized data approach. It fits in across other diseases. So we have some similarity and thank you to them and uh, the help earlier in this year in pulling the cholera uh, case report form together. This is also modular when people arrive at hospital, when they're reviewed on a daily basis, and then to collect outcome data. It's done through REDCap. The people who Put, upload the data to the system are the people that own the data. So the Malawi Ministry of Health own the data that have been put, put up um, with, the, with the WHO helping to support, uh, to, give, uh, to give analysis. And this has happened across a number of other disease processes. We are helping uh, many member states uh, in multiple different disease areas to make use of the data that are uploaded. And I think during cholera, we've got much better at reducing the time frame between getting the data and uh, having a structured report so that now if we need to deploy within two days of putting the data in or putting the tablets in, you can have structured reports available to you. I won't go into how to contribute data, but it needs to register. You need to agree to the terms of use and you need login credentials, quite obviously. So these are the key messages and spoilers. Firstly, I think as I've talked about and we'll talk about Case report forms, now we have them, can be deployed quickly. It needs resource. We've talked about staff just to give the clinical care. If you really want to think about clinical characterization, you do need additional data input staff or something that's really integrated with an electronic or other health report, health for, um, case report form, which is tricky. We have at the point uh, the forms which could be pur purposed for actually recording clinical data and then uh, uploading it later, but so far we haven't used them. We've used them in parallel with the clinical case forms or the patient um, records. I think bringing together larger data sets is going to help us, and we've ta I've talked a bit about that, um, and the current interests are well aligned with what we have here. So distribution of cases for Malawi. I'm going to show you uh, 132 cases and only one death in this. They were sequentially recorded at three sites in Lilongwe. Um, about one third were children and they all were treated at the uh, Kamuzu Central Hospital paediatric site and about two thirds were adults uh, and the two thirds adults were split about 50-50 uh, in two uh, cholera treatment facilities. This is when we collected the data. So we uh, came up with the case report form in uh, mid-February um, and managed to collect the data uh, in March uh, and April. Although we've taken some time to actually get to the point of having a useful uh, pipeline for data, we are now there, I think. The areas I've talked about on the right-hand side, so area 33 is the pediatric uh, um, population and areas 25 and 18 with cholera treatment facilities. Um, more males than females. Um, and uh, then, as you can see on the left hand side, sorry, on the right hand side, um, adults and children both represented in here. Um, we had five pregnant women uh, and 18% uh, of people under two years old. Um, and if you wanted to see the age pyramids a little bit more, uh, this was a representation. Uh, so we do have quite a, a number of uh, data points from older adults uh, compared to some of uh, other outbreaks. And I'm going to show you very, very briefly uh, the kind of data we have uh, and that we're working now with the ministry and we'll, we'll work to put this out as a more formal report. So unsurprisingly, we capture data on presentation and unsurprisingly, this is dominated by uh, diarrhea and vomiting. Um, and we can look at the other proportions of presenting, uh, presenting symptoms. And in the red, you can see this is a visit one day later 
compared to the green, which is the baseline. So you can see things improving and we can hopefully see if we implemented this at a larger scale, exactly at which points we see the mortality within the, uh, within the admission and what symptoms that relates to. We can present it differently and so our structured report now just uh, gets spat out uh, at the touch of a button uh, and again it's just a different way of visualization we have a number of maps uh, and preset analyses which uh, which in an html report come to you and can come to you twice a day if you really want them i'm going to show you two other pieces of data so just to illustrate that we can capture the treatments that are given um, here ors in the vast majority of cases, as uh, as we'd hope, um, at any point during the hospital admission, antibiotics considerably in three quarters, and intravenous fluid used also in about three quarters. And we have daily data on uh, observations taken as that will illustrate the responses to intravenous fluids. What's been difficult, and what you all appreciate, is capturing the very fine data required to think about the degree of dehydration related to uh, the patient's need, related to the amount of fluid they've had from ORS and from IV fluids. We can pull this together, but of course it needs a lot of uh, very careful data collection. But one thing that the uh, Camusia Central Hospital were particularly keen on and able to do was to collect uh, urea and electrolytes, uh, or more, more importantly from their point of view, potassium on these children. The children were nearly all under five that were admitted to this hospital, um, and this is 26 patients sequentially that they uh, were interested in because they noticed that there was, uh, there was a higher CFR and wondered whether electrolyte imbalance later on in hospital admission uh, was was a factor in determining outcomes. I can tell you, I, we can't tell you about outcomes because we only had one death in this whole lot. So in order to be able to demonstrate risk factors for outcomes, we're going to need to do this at a larger scale. But you can see, as you might expect, hypokalemia in two thirds of, uh, of these pediatric patients. That's just below the lower range of normal uh, in the laboratories. And severe hypokalemia in 12% or one in eight. And that's with serum levels of, uh, of less than 2.5 millimolar. So it starts, I think, to illustrate where we can think about therapeutic interventions, uh, or at least where we need to be focusing our eyes on the very select group of people that are in hospital. Uh, of course, the, the major impact is going to be in community and decentralization. But where we have patients in front of us, there's a considerable uh, potential to improve quality of care. And I think we can use this platform to illustrate where we focus resources. So conclusions, I think we have an agile and flexible framework. I'm, we, it's completely open, including just using our CRFs or data platform completely independently. Uh, please let us know if you wish to do that and we can import data, we can leave you with your own data, we can support uh, uh, data use and uptake um, and the synthesis and presentation of information now can be close to real time not for Malawi, but for the next one. Um, we, we do have work to do, but the foundation is there. And I think we've got a really good platform for discussion later. Which variables do you need? Who are the partners we can work with? How do we work together to bring all of these data and synthesize them so that we get answers to the things that have already appeared here? Um, thanks to very many people from the Malawi Ministry of Health, from the Public Health uh, Institute of Malawi, from the G, uh, GTFCC, uh, and a huge number of people that it took to, to get this up and running. Next time should take fewer people and certainly should take uh, less effort, uh, but I wish to thank them all and thank you for listening.